Hello everybody, this is Suyosh50 and I'll be your host doing a let's play of Supreme Ruler 2020. To start off, we'll be playing a single player campaign and there, well there are two ways to play, you can either do the sync regular campaign mode or choose a scenario of, of certain mostly fictional events, but we're going to be doing the regu regular campaign instead. Now before we start, well, just, I'll just have to explain a few things, I suppose. Uh, to choose... Right here you can choose either campaign or sandbox mode of three scenarios. Global Crisis, which has every single country you know today, all 184 regions, as it's, as it's called here. And you can choose either one you wish. You can even play as a small, well... In Oceana, Oceana's case, small um, o um, island nations. I wouldn't call Australia small, but you might get my point of certain rather interesting situations, not just in the Pacific, but also all across the world. Shattered World, on your hand, is a little different, as I'm sh as you can see. It's a much more crowded world, as now there are a total of 248 different nations to deal with. To deal with, I mean. In North America's case, the former countries of Canada and the United States have been completely broken up by... Now replaced by their every single state that you know is now an independent nation. In this case... When you select Shadow World and North America, you get a, a pre-selected nation of California in this case. The same could be said for every other parts of the co of every w continent. Continent, I mean, in Europe, uh, the nations of Germany, France, Britain, Spain, Italy, and Italy, include and Russia, have all been completely broken up. And unlike in Canada or United States, where it's quite obvious that every single independent nation is what today is a state, in other parts of the world, like Europe and Asia, um, it's a different story. In Germany, it's split up between the East, not just East and West Germany, again, but also a brand new competitor, which is, if I could find it, South Germany. In Britain, it's broken up between England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and of course, well, of course, or of course, it's already independent anyway. But Ireland, I guess I'll have to bring in Ireland. Uh, France, I can't really list all, all of it, but Paris, I know, is completely independent, including other parts so to speak. And oh, I might have forgotten to mention Spain is also completely broken up as well. And that's the same for most countries. Others are still around, but yeah, this is a much bigger mess in Europe. Asia as well is also a bit broken up in certain countries. And those countries do not include India, which is still a single nation. China on the other hand, is broken up between several nations, such as Manchuria, Inner Mongolia, North China, and Southern China, and Tibet. And another that I'm a little unsure is... Um, if I could find... I don't know, I'm a little unsure about... Yeah, I think it was this one. U... Uh, U... Gur... Is that? I apologize if I butcher the name, but yeah, this nation has also broken up, broken away from China. I think I could be mistaken for a different nation, but now oh well, well, much of the other nations are still the same, but it's a much, much crowded world now, and among them is including. A rather un interesting nation is called the UN Protectorate, which which is comprised of multiple former nations of 
well, island nations at that, and former territories of Britain, France, you name it, well, overseas territories that have become part of the UN Protectorate. So, yeah. But right now, we're going to be playing in North America as one of the independent states, and... You know what? I think I'll just play as California for for now. And I forgot to mention, out of all the other states, Washington, D.C. is also an independent nation as well. Which I find is a little interesting, as it's literally just it. Just a single city that's independent. That's it. But for now, we're playing as California. Uh... Another thing is to uh, pretty much choose the difficulty of what the world situation is. In this case, it's medium, but we can choose either none, which means nobody goes to war. Low, eh, one in a million chance, I suppose, of anybody going to war. Or mostly, with the exception of most of the time, making alliances. Medium is so-so, but higher than that, well... You're going to have a really hard time trying to make friends with certain countries. We're going to go with very high because I admit I would want to see a global war at the moment. Uh, game settings. There are multiple ways to conquer or win sir, of any nation you find. Or how you win, that is. And there are different ways such as a military score, approval, tech, economic, diplomacy, or a total score. Unification, I think this might work for certain nations. Maybe, say, reuniting Italy, France, or any of those European nations. North America, that might take a long time, so I'm not sure if you want to try this, but that's just you. Capture, I haven't figured out what exactly this is, so I don't know. Complete, the, uh, complete... This one, I have to say, is by far the most annoying condition to do if you want to conquer somebody. You have to literally take over every single city, town, ports, military deposits, whatever. You have to conquer every, almost every single thing before the government you are conquering capitulates. Capital, I always go for this first. As this is a much easier to take the capital and the whole nation just well coughs up literally just surrenders uh, scenario settings you, know, you could choose uh, the amount of resources the initial funds approval effects uh, critical the United Nations basically if you go to war too much allow government change meaning there meaning every I think for certain nations will be four or five years in game there will be a voting to see of any sort of uh, government you want that want change so right oh yeah and I forgot to mention what type of government you are and of course the, there are three which is either a conservative you are either a conservative a moderate or a liberal but I'm just gonna go in between as a moderate as I am slightly mixed of this option but oh well oh and uh, random events this I'm not too sure because it's not like another paradox game like say Darkest of Hours or Europa Universal. Uh, I might for the universe. You know, I'll, I'll just call it Europa, so to speak. This I really have no idea how this could have worked. I don't see anything that's similar to those men mentioned paradox games I mentioned, but uh, I don't know. But for now, we'll need a lot of money because some of these independent recently made independent nations or even nations in real life have very little money very little resources resources and even more so little amount of military of a military that can be a problem resources well this is a if you want more challenge you can choose to either standardize like of in real life or sometime in the future abundance which obviously means there's an unusually large amount of resources everywhere 
But these two will increase a little more difficulty, meaning that I suppose if you want a reason to go to war, it'll be for certain resources that are slowly but surely becoming rarer and rarer to find. Or way too little to find and you're desperate for any form of materials you need for your war machine, your people, and er everything. But we're gonna go with just standard at the moment. Uh, one more is military settings. You can either turn on or turn off the fog of war. Enhanced spotting, which increases range, I guess. Ranges, mostly of the how far your unit attacks. Units eliminate when reaching most. I don't. I repeat, I do not recommend this if you want to build a mighty empire. Please, don't select this. If you want to keep the units that are already conquered, they can be useful, whether or not they are old or not. So to speak, and yeah. That is not a good idea. Allow nuclear weapons, you can use these, but uh, the fallout effect is something you're going to be a little worried about. Penalties? Well... You can choose either a literal high, medium, or low, but hey, this is nuclear weapons we're talking about, so obviously there will be a very high penalty rating on your approval. So, approval effects. Um, you could tweak this if you want more if you want more challenge for various reasons, but I'm gonna go with a little medium-ish. I'm not going low. I'm just gonna go with a so-so neutral sort of sort of thing. And uh yeah, everything everything looks okay and let's get started. And here we are. And there's a tip of the day which can automate and here's the world. And as you can see, North America is literally completely broken up. Other parts, including which is, and here it is, that I mentioned, the UN Protectorate. In, which is a global nation, so to speak. Uh, before we go to California, we're going to look at other parts of the world. Here's Europe, and as I said, Britain is broken up between England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland and it's heavily randomized of the AI as sometimes some nations can go to war with each other sometimes they become friends and sometimes no friends at all that depends uh, here's Spain and here are the nations that I couldn't rem remember off the top of my head Madrid and Barcelona in France it's Paris and Marcel Germany as I said, it's East, West, and now South Germany. Italy is also broken up between Nap the Napl uh, Naples, Sicily, and Sardinia as well. Uh, up north is Milan, and in the middle of all, it, all of it is Rome. Other parts of the world, not much. Russia has, well become a much as has pretty much broken up a lot of different nations such as uh, hold on a minute here's the uh, state status in this case we have Moscow St. Petersburg the West Urals North Cossus Volgrad Vol Volgograd I mean others now not Kazakhstan it's already been independent from the Soviet Union the Western Urals Western Siberia Central Siberia, and finally, Eastern Siberia, or the Far East, so to speak.